Okay, let's look a minute at some dedicated hardware. So inside of our lab, we have a computer just for recording video. So that's called the recording bay. And inside the recording bay, you can see we have a computer, which is actually right down here, a desktop big computer. And we have four screens, one, two, three, four, because the more screens you have, the more you can do, the more you can get done. And this machine here will record the video that's coming in from the lab's cameras. On the other side of the room, we have the editing area, the editing bay. And the editing bay, of course, is a nonlinear editing software package, in this case, Vegas. And we have one, two, three monitors, two monitors to edit our video on and one monitor for the preview to see what we're creating. That's a nice little setup. We also have a NAS down here. NAS is a network attached storage. A network attached storage, meaning that hard disk basically on the network. So in here we have a box that has one, two, three, four hard disk, and each, each hard disk is four terabytes. So we can keep all of our video stored on this hard disk. Otherwise you run out of space very quickly because video files can be very large. Just a 20, 30 minute video file can be one to two gigabytes. When we look at this NAS, Network Attached Storage, you can see that actually we have two of them, one, two. Why do we have two of these? Because we actually back one up every night to the second one. There's nothing worse than you've got a big production. You've spent weeks, maybe months, videotaping, producing, and then a hard disk crash and you lose everything. It's terrible. Another thing that I often see students having problems with is that they're putting their files in the cloud and they're sharing them with each other. You do A, I'll do B, then you do C, and then somebody somehow forgets or they lose something, and then when we try to put everything together, we can't find it, so a bit of chaos. So the really good thing about having a network attached storage, NAS, a NAS, is that you can keep everything centralized. And the good thing about having a backup is you're not going to lose something if one of the hard disks breaks or you have a power surge or something like that. Now, here we only have one backup. It's really better that you have two or three backups, but in the lab, that's a lot of video, so we've got these two are the, are the immediate, the most important hard disk we have. We have hard disk on the PC, hard disk in the NAS, and hard disk in the NAS backup. Lots of hard disk everywhere. One rule we have in the lab, and I think that you would be very wise to follow, is never use a USB on the PC. This is the editing PC and the capture PC. We put these big signs. Don't ever plug in a USB. USBs are the easiest way to spread a virus, and students have these viruses on their USBs left and right, super common. Just plugging it in would be enough to get a virus. Even if you say you want to format the USB, even that, just plugging it in can cause a virus to spread before you format. So be careful, no USBs. We don't allow any USB connection. Anything you want, put it in the cloud and download it from the cloud. Come back to our student project. So we have LED light. The project name is LED light. They have three folders, edit, raw, and render. That's very good. Let's take a look at the raw. Here are the videos they recorded. And you can see the sizes of these are quite large. Video files will get very large very quickly. Very soon you have a just a couple minutes video here is 700 megabytes, almost one gigabyte. A 
Now the problem with the names here is we're not sure which shots are bad and which shots are good. We only know that they've, they've shot the video and we don't know if it's good or not. So that's kind of not a good way to name. Okay, we're going to close that down. We're going to back out. So we've got our raw footage. We also have our editing file, which is a Vegas file, and that editing is inside this file right here. And they had a final file, which was the render file, which is their MP4. And that's much smaller than their original recordings, 200 megabytes. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and look at a project now that's inside of Vegas. Here is Vegas open on the screen in its default form. One of the problems with vi video editors is that they have a lot of things inside of them. It's very complicated and your computer monitor is very small. This is one reason it's not good to use a notebook to edit your videos because the screen is so small. Much better if you use a notebook to attach a external monitor so you can see more, like I have in this little picture here, in fact. I have my notebook and an external monitor, and sometimes you can have more than one monitor. But right now, let's just take a look on one monitor so you can see the space is very cramped, very small. Many of these aspects you already know about, these features. So this is our preview window. This is what you're editing. This is what you see. And down at the bottom down here is your timeline. And in your timeline, you have different layers. So I think everyone understands this. You've probably done this before. And so if you click anywhere on your timeline, your preview will show you what is there. So the top layer comes out first. So in this case, the top layer are our text, and then we have maybe some animation or some graphics, such as these pictures here, PNG, and then you have my live recording, and then we have the audio from the recording, and then we have a music track down here at the bottom. So these are the different tracks. Now, in Vegas, all of the media that you're using comes into the media library or media bin, which is up top here. So these are all the video clips and all of the artwork and all of the graphics that have been dragged into the project. So it would be good if we could keep this on another window, but here we just have this one screen, so it's very small, hard to see. Up here on the top right, I'm going to enlarge it a little bit, is the mixer. This is the master volume level. So if I play a little bit, this, you can see the audio lines moving. So the audio output is there. Now you would like the audio output to be high, but not peaking up to the top. If I pull it down, it'll go down to be totally quiet. If I pull it all the way up, it'll peak. See that red? When it turns red at the top, that's too high. So you want it to be up into the yellow range, but not red. Now you may wonder, why would you want to it's very easy to just make it be very low and you think everything's okay because you can hear it. But that's because your volume is turned up loud. When you upload to YouTube, it's going to be too quiet. So you want it to be pretty high up there, but not peaking. Okay. On the timeline, what we can do is place our mouse someplace and then we can use the zoom button to zoom in and out or we can use the up and down arrows on the keyboard to zoom in and out. And you see we get a more detailed view. And as we zoom in and out, we can see some of the key parts of Vegas, which are the ends of the clips. The ends of the clips have these fades on them. So these little blue lines here, let me zoom in a little bit. These are the fades out and the fades in. So for example here, we can grab, we move our mouse and your mouse turns a little kind of half circle. You can grab it, pull that line, and that's creating a fade in. So now if we look at the preview, we can see that it will 
fade in. These are titles. Over right here, and you can see. There you go. The titles are coming in slowly, and then they're 100% in. Okay, so those are fades. Here's an example of the titles and the graphic are going to fade out, and then my video here of me is going to fade in. So you drag this line here, the fade in, fade out line, and you can see as we move frame by frame, the graphics fade out and the live video fades in, and there we go. And now we're going to fade in with more graphics. There. Now when you pull that little corner there, all the way up. Sometimes it's very hard to get a hold of because there's many things happening here. 